Oops. We spent the last several lectures talking about um, electric field coupling, magnetic field coupling at low frequencies, magnetic field coupling at high frequencies, and, and shielded enclosures. Um, and one of the things that we learned about magnetic field coupling is that you can't stop a magnetic flux line. And so if we want to do magnetic field shielding, it's going to be necessary to divert the magnetic field around the, the circuit that we're trying to protect. So we have a little uh, setup here to demonstrate uh, magnetic field coupling and magnetic field shielding. I've got a uh, waveform generator. Currently it's uh, putting out a 60 hertz sine wave. Uh, that 60 hertz sine wave then is driving a coil. So we have current flowing in a coil. Uh, of course, current flowing in a coil is going to generate a magnetic field line and, and those magnetic field lines are going to wrap through the coil and then wrap around on themselves. Um, we have a secondary coil very close to the to the first coil and so most of the flux lines generated by the first coil are going to also pass through the second coil. Uh, time varying magnetic flux passing through a, a coil is going to generate a voltage in that coil. So with an oscilloscope we're measuring the voltage um, that is being collected by or generated by the uh, secondary coil. So we have magnetic field coupling between the first coil and the second coil. We can see on the oscilloscope that our, our uh, coupling is a sine wave. We are at, oh, we're at 90 hertz. Let me back off to 60 hertz. With, a, with our 60 hertz uh, field, we have a peak-to-peak -peak coupled voltage of 270 millivolts, by the way. Magnetic field coupling should be proportional to frequency and as you can see when we go from 60 to 90 hertz we're getting an increase in that coupled field. If I back off to 60 uh, hertz again and now if we go down in frequency we would expect to see less coupling. Uh, so at 60 hertz we have 270 millivolts of coupled voltage peak to peak and we back down to 30, 30 and we're at uh, about half that or, or 140 uh, millivolts peak to peak. So uh, our coupling is proportional to frequency just as we would expect. I'll take that back up to 60. So there's our 60 hertz field. Um, and let's place something in the field that might interfere with the uh, Field actually, so this is a sheet of Teflon. It's 62 mils thick. Uh, the permeability of Teflon, as you might guess, the relative permeability is about one, the same as air. So also, as you might expect, if we were to put the Teflon in between the two coils, uh, it has virtually no effect on the magnitude of the coupled field. Um, if, if the material had a high permeability, then what we might expect is that the flux lines passing through the first coil, when they pass into the material, um, rather than passing through the material in the second coil and passing uh, and completing the loop uh, around, what we might expect to happen is to have some of that flux hit the material with the high permeability and then see a shortcut. Basically, it's, it can go out to the side of the material uh, and then loop around the primary coil and that route involves traveling through a, a shorter amount of air, a, a smaller airspace, um, and therefore it's a lower reluctance path uh, and it doesn't involve passing through the secondary coil. But with the Teflon, the Teflon is virtually invisible to magnetic fields. Um, we, Teflon, of course, is also uh, not a good conductor. Uh, it, it doesn't um, it's, it's not quite invisible, but even electric fields are not affected much by that. But copper, on the other hand, copper is a very good conductor. Um, certainly, uh, there's vir vir virtually no electric field inside a, a, the copper. Um, this is 21 mil thick copper. We place it in between our two coils, and as you can see, there is no, no visible change at all in the amplitude of the coupled magnetic field. And that's because even though copper is a great conductor, 
Um, magnetic, low frequency magnetic fields are not about the conductivity, they're all about the permeability. And copper has a relative permeability that's approximately the same as that of free space. So the copper is virtually invisible to low frequency magnetic fields. Here we've got some relatively thick, uh, 50 mil thick brass. The brass in there that's also basically invisible to the magnetic fields. Aluminum, invisible to the magnetic fields. Uh, just to be sure, here's a, some very thick aluminum, 125 mils thick. Uh, it doesn't even quite fit in between my my coils, but even the thick aluminum is vis invisible to the 60 hertz magnetic field. Sheet of magnesium, invisible. Here we have stainless steel. Stainless steel ASTM A240. It's 24 mils thick. With stainless steel, um, just using the name stainless steel, we don't know for sure what the permeability of, of the steel is going to be. We can get an idea by putting it in here, and we see that that stainless steel is virtually invisible to magnetic fields. So the permeability is very low, um, probably close to that of free space. Here we have some AST or, or A653 steel, 30 mils thick. Stick that in there, and now all of a sudden you see we do affect the amplitude of the magnetic field. Without the material, the amplitude was 270 millivolts peak to peak. And with the material in the way, we're getting about 168 millivolts peak to peak. So the steel does have a high permeability. It is collecting some of those flux lines, shunting them around the primary coil uh, before they pass through the secondary coil, and that's why we're seeing the attenuation that we're seeing. That was 30 mil thick. This is the same steel, A653, but this is 60 mils thick, so it's twice as thick as the steel that we had before. Place that between, and you see again, uh, we do have attenuation. In fact, now we're down to 144 millivolts peak to peak, so we have greater attenuation with the thicker steel. And again, we would expect that because now the reluctance of the steel is, of the path involving the steel anyway, is approximately half what it was before because we've got twice as much steel, twice the thickness of the steel for that flux to pass through. So it's a more, even more desirable path. And finally, I've got another sheet of material. This is also a form of steel. Um, only this is, it's a six mil thick, so instead of 60 mils, it's, it's much thinner than the 60 mil steel we had. But this is a, a commercial product designed to have a very high permeability. Um, so if we put that thin sheet of material in there, we see that our attenuation is pretty significant. We're down now to 120 millivolts peak to peak. So this actually worked even better than the 60 mil thick uh, regular steel that we had, um, even though it's much thinner. This material, of course, it has a very high permeability at low frequencies, although we would expect as we go higher in frequency that we would lose some of that permeability. But for low frequency magnetic field shielding, um, where it's all about the permeability, um, these materials uh, can be very effective.